Good morning, good morning, witches. How are you? Happy, happy Thursday. Let me go into my groups and make sure we are going live where we're supposed to be going live at. Everything's going really well. Video's working, audio's working. Looks like we're doing really well. I wonder if we can invite some folks in. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. We're gonna wait for some people to come on in. Happy, happy Thursday. While we're doing that, let me go to my Facebook page and see what is going on. And then we'll get started on um, today's kind of mini lesson. I hope you all had a great full moon. We had a full moon um, ritual yesterday. And if you missed that, the Zoom replay is in the group. We had a wonderful, wonderful um, ritual. It was about being in balance with Libra. Let me see if I can get this to work. Okay, we're on my business page. I want to see if I can invite some people in. Hey, hello. If you're here, let me know. I see a couple of viewers coming in. We'll get started in just one second. I just want to make sure that we are on the right page. Turn down the volume some. So I thought there it is. I thought there was a where. Hey, Jackie, how are you? I'm gonna put this over here so I can look at comments. Um, please share this out with. Um, I'm gonna send some. Ah, oh, okay. Maybe this will work this way. Maybe. Jackie, you're already on my list, so I think we're good. So I think we're good. I think we're good. This is a new kind of system that I'm using now. So it broadcasts me over all these different platforms, but you have to figure it out as we go. But isn't that how it always is? We just kind of figure it out as we go. So hey, Jackie, how are you today? Thank you for joining me yesterday. And um the um ritual i hope you all doing well now we're starting to get some people coming in hey jackie says she's doing wonderful hey breezy thanks for watching me i'm going up uh, going live really really early today because i have so much to do um so i wanted to get a jump on my day today is thursday almost a day or two after full moon so happy full moon or belated full moon um let me know what you are working on if you did any full moon rituals and um, how you feel during the full moon. We're gonna wait for some people to come in and then we're gonna talk about how to embody the energy of the high priestess. And I pull some high priestess cards. We're gonna talk about the priestess cards, how to bring that energy into your life and how to work with the high priestess. So today, magical coffee. I am still sipping on my morning coffee. I'm still... Um, Still early for me, still early. Let me minimize my stuff so I know what I'm looking at. So drop in the comments how your moon ritual went. Why can't I see myself anymore? I think we're going. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. 
We got some, okay, I think we're good. There we go, I think we're good now. All right, so let's talk about how to embody the high priestess energy. And if I'm looking over here, it's because I'm looking at comments on my phone instead of my computer. So I'm not ignoring you. So this is what dual monitors would come in handy, right? So let's talk about a little bit about embodying the high priestess energy and how to bring that in during uncertain times, during um, times that are just kind of rocky, especially now, things um, that we just have no control over. How can we bring the, the energy of the high priestess in and work with that during uncertain times? So um, the high priestess card is one of my absolute favorite cards. Um, in the tarot deck. And I'm, I have some um, high priestess cards that I did pick that we're going to go over and look at the symbols in the card, what they mean. And then I'm going to give you a couple tips, probably about 10 tips. I think I have 10 tips on how to embody the high priestess energy. Um, the high priestess energy around the, her card and around her um, character is she's strong, she's profoundly wise, calm, insightful, in balance, and is really in tune with her subconscious energy. So does anybody here love the High Priestess card? Um, I have, there's a couple of cards in the tarot deck that I have to really resonate with in order for me to purchase it. They could have beautiful images throughout the deck and maybe their, their high priestess card sucks and I'm like, no, I can't buy it. If I don't resonate with the high priestess card and I have some other cards I need to resonate with, then I can't, I just can't purchase that deck. That is my card, the high priestess card. I love that card. If it doesn't have beautiful imagery in it and I don't relate to that, then I just can't buy that deck, unfortunately. Is anybody else here like that? Raise your hand. Um, we've got about three or four people watching, so thank you for catching me live. I know it's super early. Um, if you are catching me on the replay, hit hashtag replay, and I will answer in any of your comments. So Madam Z here, your magical life coach, and we're talking about how to embody the high priestess energy during uncertain times. So let's look at some of the imagery of the high priestess card. Um, when you pull the high priestess card in tarot, we will find her usually sitting on a throne between two pillars, um, one black pillar and one white pillar. And you will notice that the pillars have the letters B and J on them. And a lot of people really don't understand. And they ask a lot, what does the letters B and J mean? Well, it's said that the columns were made from Solomon's temple. There's a lot of Jewish symbolism in the tarot cards. Um, I'm going to horribly butcher this name, but it's Jackin and Boaz. Jackin is the right, which represents the pillar of establishment. And Boaz, which is a left pillar, represents the pillar of strength. So you'll find her in the middle of these two pillars. And I will show you some images of this. The pillars are also depicted in the duality of nature which is masculine and feminine, feminine, good and evil, negative, positive, inward, outward, yin and yang, ebb and flow, etc. Um, hey, Bay, how are you? Thanks for tuning in so early. I give you kudos for people who are coming in early. Um, I usually don't go on so early, but I honor you guys for showing up in your presence super, super early, just like me. So let's look at the images of what it is what I'm talking about. And I pulled about four cards from four different decks and we're gonna go over them. So this is the High Priestess card. Pull it back a little bit. This is the Everyday Witch Tarot. Let me see if I can get it focused. Maybe, maybe not, come on. Ooh, she's up and close. I'll pull back on her. And as you can see, the, her pillars are B and J. Um, that's not the Everyday Witch Tarot. I'm sorry. This is the Everyday Witch Tarot. 
this is the deck that I read from. So I'll get her really, really close. Give time for the camera to focus. And she is sitting between two pillars, but candle pillars. The high priestess. I know it's been forever. How are you? I need to move you guys over here so I can see you better. <laughs> And this is the new deck that I just got. And this is the high priestess with her. I love her because she's all about subconscious energy. And we're going to talk about that. But she doesn't really have any pillars. And then this is from the Lutra Tarot, I think it is. I like this one. It's very Art deco -y tarot. And she is in between the columns. Mucho Tarot. Um, hey, Kathy, thanks for joining me live. Super, super early, I know. Thank you for joining me. Um, so let's see. Oops. Perfect. So we're doing good. Comments are coming in. Bray is doing good. We're awesome. So let's talk some more about the tarot cards and the high priestess energy that's coming in. She sits firmly between the knowing. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Latanya's here. How are you, Latanya? She sits firmly between the knowing that there is knowledge and, and sacred space in between. She is working the in-between. She's in the liminal space. Um, you will notice that she wears a crown and I'm gonna show you that one. And that represents the crown of Isis or some of them have this, the triple crown and I will show that one, the triple goddess symbol. And that is that one. And some cards will depict the, let me move this one over. There you go. Now I can see. Um, the crown of Isis. So it just depends on the card that you have and the deck and how they represent it. Um, you will also see her depicted as being seen with like a crescent moon on her feet. This one has a crescent moon at her feet. And the traditional one should have, this is the traditional one. So you'll probably see her with the crescent moon at her feet. Okay. Um, she has complete control over her emotions, her feminine energy, her moon mysteries, the solar cross, which you will see on this one. All of these really have solar crosses on it. That one. And there's solar cross here on that one. And then this one has the solar cross on it. And that indicates that she is in tune with the cycles of life, the wheel of the year, the mother and the nurture in herself. And let's not forget about the pomegranates. You will always see pomegranates on her. On the traditional Rider weight, it's on her robe. And on this one, it's on her necklace. Pomegranates have to do with um, fertility, of course, but it also has to do with nourishment and it also has to do with Persephone. And we'll talk more about that. Um, and there's also the fruit of the underworld, fruit of life, and she's associated with Persephone, which I absolutely love Persephone. Um, the high priestess is associated with the goddess Isis, which, which we've talked about her having the um, crown of Isis. Persephone, Artemis, Diana, Hecate, and many, many more. Let me catch up on comments. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Um, Antonia said, I'm so sorry I couldn't make it to circle so much. I, I saw that I was gonna message you today. Um, and see how you're doing. 
Catch the replay if you can, but watch out for my message. Hey, Gamma, what time is it over there, Gamma? Gamma's across the pond. So how can we embody the high priestess energy during the times of uncertainty, during the times that we're going through? How can we do that? So get a pen and paper out. Let's write these down as I go over my tips on how to embody the wisdom, the calmness, the um, inner strength of the um, high priestess. Four in the afternoon. Okay, not too late. That's a good time, right? So get your pen and paper out. And if you have your tarot deck, pull that high priestess card out and let's get to witching. So here's a few tips on what I do or what you can do that I'm going to share with you how to bring the high priestess energy into your life. So number one, take control of your environment. As you can see, I'm going to use just the regular one. She is very much like sitting there on her throne. She's like, nobody's going to come into my environment who I don't let into my environment. Limit things that don't bring you joy or uplift you. The high priestess does not have time for mundane nonsense outside influences she knows her limits and she boldly draws them in the sand you really don't see a lot of people around the high priestess i've never seen anybody around the high priestess she is very much centered in herself in her universe and she allows in who she allows in Number two, spend time connecting with mother nature. So important because remember I talked to you about how in tune she is with um, nature. She is one with nature. So plant some flowers. Let me see if some of them have, no, that number, none of mine that I picked have where she's out in the garden. Um, Listen to birds, give an offering, sit in the grass or just hold a crystal. Cause I know sometimes, especially now we're kind of like, um, can't really go outside. Although I have a big backyard. Um, so sometimes we can't have the opportunity to go out to the parks or to the lakes, or we don't have, if we live in an apartment or city witches, we don't have the luxury of having the um, green space that we have. So just pick a crystal up, just put your hands in some dirt do some creative earthing, but you need to get back to being grounded and being centered. Hey, Samantha, thanks for watching. Do a ritual. We just did a full moon ritual yesterday. Um, you have to work your magic. This is one of the most powerful things you can do to connect to your inner priestess. Mm. And a tip on that, it doesn't have to be this hoity-toity, high magic, ceremony where you have to get all your magical tools out that's not um what i teach i love that but there's a time and place for that it depends on the cycles of the um, wheel of the year and depends on how you feel so don't feel like you have to get all your magical tools out to perform a magical ritual because you don't or powerful rit ritual because you don't i want you to sit in sacred space you can light some incense center yourself um, play some music, go within, pull out that tarot card that represents the high priestess, shut the outside world, and really bring in the energy of the high priestess. Bring her into you. And what do you see as the energy of bringing in the high priestess? How do you want to embody the high priestess? And type in the comments and share with me. Number four, Play some kick-ass music, stuff that really gets you motivated, gets you, you know, your juices flowing, gets you excited. You know, the stuff that um, I usually like to play is like deep tribal drumming music, um, women empowerment songs, or something that brings you powerful high priestess into you. Um, I love playing Stevie Nicks. I love Izzo. I love, you know, all those female empowerment songs. Um, artist. So bring that into you and start bringing some songs that you can just really empower you to step into that high priestess energy. 
And number five, do some inner work. As you can see in this card, she's doing a lot of divination. She's working on her shadow side. She's working on what fears may be coming up for you during the times of uncertainty. I know I've got some things that are coming up. But instead of freaking out and instead of not being focused, I'm going within, connecting with my guys, connecting with my inner power, connecting with, okay, what can I do now? What insight do I need to embody? How can I get through this instead of just not being focused? Calm action is what she is about. So she's doing some inner work. Um, Kathy said, I love the Native American flute music. Yes, play something that really just gets you into the um, energy of the high priestess. Kathy said, the kitty's reading the runes. Yes, isn't it cute? I love this deck. She's like, I want to read too. Pick a rune. I want to pick a rune. She's so cute. As you can see, I've used the hell out of these cards. <laughs> this is my favorite deck. Um, so... Whether it is shadow work or cord cutting or forgiveness, which is going to be huge during this time, whether it's that kind of ceremony that you need to do, you need to do the inner work. Um, this is the time to do the powerful work and face things that have been holding you back. And you have to keep telling yourself, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I am not afraid. Um, Gemma said, I think the right, I think think that right now the high priestess is home-centered, taking care of home and family. Hestia. The goddess Hestia is about hearth and home. So yes, showing them how to deal with the new world. She's a leader. Yes, you're very correct, Gemma. So reach out to others in need. This is my step number six. Reach out to, hey, Shelly, thanks for joining us a little early. Thank you for joining us. Um, so number six, reach out to others in need. You are the high priestess. This is you. You are embodying her. Your duty is to help others, to uplift, offer a shoulder to cry on, offer some healing. You're the spiritual leader in your community. This is your calling. When you reincarnated into this world, into this plane of existence, this is your contract that you signed in order to come back into this plane, into this existence. Are you honoring that contract? Are you being the high priestess? That you said you would be. Number seven, erect an altar that honors your high priestess energy. This is super important. I love altars. I have many altars around my home and that keeps me super focused and in tune with the energy of the high priestess. So what goes on altar? Put items on that altar that makes you feel powerful, brings you joy, helps you connect with your inner wisdom. For example, put some red or purple cloths down, altar cloths. Place the high priestess tarot card on your altar. Burn purple or red candles, white candles, anything that gives you that power to connect with her. If you're working with a certain goddess energy that is a high priestess, you want to honor them some light, some temple um, incense or your favorite incense. I love temple incense. I love copal. I love frankincense. I love myrrh. Um, place a picture or plaque of a moon. Place an item that represents the elements, earth, air, fire, water. Because remember, we embody are in tune with mother nature, with the four elements, with the things that are inward and outward the pillars, the four elements. Um, offer some delicious and decadent food, honey, milk, bread, oranges, pomegranates, apples, 
um, homemade bread, if you have homemade bread, anything that that goddess would love to have. Make your goddess altar or temple and make it, sh make sure it brings you back to your power center. Sorry, my nose is itching. So what does that mean when my nose itches, everyone? That means that spirit's coming in. Woo! Thank you, spirit. So I call it a living altar. You need to make this your living altar. It is great to do an altar under the full moon um, or a new moon because you want to bring in that energy of the high priestess. Um, so what high priestess energy do you want to embody? Do you want to bring in? Let me know what high priestess energy, let me know in the comments, the high priestess energy that you want to embody. Because we all have the high priestess in us. We are all of the universe of the high priestess. We just need to embody that and step into the power and not be afraid. This is not a time for us to shelter back, to be afraid. This is a time for us to move into your high priestess power. And by doing the tips that I told you and I suggested that you start doing, it's going to shift that energy for you. It's going to get you motivated. It's going to get you to the hell yeah. It's going to get you to the power center. It's going to get you that I can change the world now. I can manifest what I want to manifest. I can be the calm in the storm. I can move with action instead of chaotic energy. I can divine the answers. I can look for guidance. I connect with my spirit guides or my ancestors in times of uncertainty to give healing to other people that don't have that connection, who didn't have that soul contract when they um, came back into this life. Um, so we all have the high priestess energy in us. We just have to call her in. We have to surrender to her, which is huge. She's waiting for you to connect with her and weave your magic in the world because we need this more than ever. So what I usually say when I have an altar and I want to bring in the high priestess energy and I'm working with my um, high priestess um, altar, I will sit in front of it. I will meditate. I will light um, some candles and play some beautiful music or some heart thumping music or whatever gets you motivated whatever you feel that you need to do, I always say the mantra, I am still, I am powerful, I am strong, I am wise, I am female energy, I am in tune with my inner wisdom. So let me repeat that. I am still, I am powerful, I am strong, I am wise. I am female energy and I am in tune with my inner wisdom. And I say that about three times. So let me catch up on comments. I have so much I feel I need to shed. Yes, and that's part of becoming the high priestess because when you step into that new role, you can't bring the old shit with you. You've got beautiful clothes waiting for you. Look at the beautiful clothes that she's wearing. It's almost like you are putting on new garments. You, if, when you step into this role, your new reality is changing. You cannot bring in your old stuff with you. It's going to be holding you back. You've got new garments to wear. You've got new jewelry, new um clothing that represents who you are and emotions you got to let go of the emotions you got to do that core cutting ceremony that we talked about um because to bring me it brings you stagnant i need to release what no longer serves me yes you do in order to be the high priestess that we're called to be we need to release fear we need to release self-doubt. We need to release things that people said we could never do, could never be, could never accomplish because that's their shit. That's not our shit. Our calling and what we were put to do on this earth is 
be that high priestess energy, be that light and that healer that we were meant to be in the world, especially now, God, you, you seriously, I'm, I'm talking to you. And I've said this time and time again, the world that we see in the past is not going to be the world that we see in the future. This is why it's important for you to step forward into your high priestess energy to help create this new world of healing, of acceptance, of love centered because we need your healing, your high priestess power, knowledge, inner wisdom, clarity to create this new world that is going to be emerging, emerging, right? Um, Gamma, uh, I think I like Carolyn. I love Carolyn. She is a keeper of the cauldron. Yes, stir that cauldron around, right? So if you want to accelerate and step into your high priestess energy, but you're like, I don't have time to do all of this. This is the program for you. It's a 13 week program. Every week you get new content, you get coaching with me, you learn how to take, what I re really do is take all the damn fluff out of everything that you've been seeing and we get to witching. We don't have time for you to spend hours and hours and hours in a 200 page book. And you're like, I don't even know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. You have a step-by-step -step every week what you need to do. This You need to work with the moon energy. You need to do some spell work. You need to do some cord cutting. You need to do some rituals. You need to know what your magical tools are. You need to, you know, we cut all that damn fluff down so you can get to witching because we don't have time anymore. We don't. I take you from scrolling the internet trying to find your answers to actually like, I know what class this is in. This is module 13. What do I need to do? What do I need to, um, to watch? What do I need to embody? And these are um, really cut it down so you can get to witching fast because the the energy and the portals that are going to be open for change are going to be closing fast so this is why i've made this really simple for you to step into and learn how to witch immediately because we need you guys to step into your high priestess um role so we can change and we can form the new world of heart-centered and living in magic and being feminine energy and letting the um, patriarch kind of energy just go. Um, we don't, it's, it's our time. They've had their chance and they scrooged it up. So now it's our time to come in as high priestess and fix everything. So how are we gonna create this new, new energy? So how are you going to embody the high priestess energy? And are you going to step into your high priestess calling or are you going to shrink back into fear, into self-doubt, into internet scrolling, into confusion, into, like I talked about fear, and you're not going to be listening to your calling. You're doing your ancestors a disservice by not stepping up and you're doing your con and you're not listening to your contract. You are not fulfilling your contract that you promised the universe, the creator, God, goddess, whoever you relate to, that you would fulfill as you come back. I'm giving this tool for you to jump in. Guys, come on, man. I'm, I'm, I don't really want to say this because I'm, I'm not, I'm not a beggar, but <laughs> I'm begging you that the world needs high priestess energy now. We need you now. The first module is already dropped. Um, this is my high priestess program. So after the 13 weeks, you will become a certified high priestess. You can start witching immediately. We have a Facebook group. We get group coachings. I'm thinking about bringing in some experts on different type of subjects. So you can talk to them, ask them questions. Um, this is almost like a living program. So if you like Madam Z, I need some help on this. I want to learn more about this. I will create that for you. I will feel, if I feel like I need to bring in 
some more experts, maybe on um, mindset, maybe on runes, maybe on hoodoo, maybe on, I don't know, on crossing ceremonies. I will bring them in for you. This is a live kind of living program. I'm not going to be walking away from you. You get support from me. Um, you get Voxer support from me. I added that in Monday through Friday. So you get access to me. So jump in. It's 333 with a paid in full bonus. And the link is there also. But if you cannot afford the 333, we have payment plans, three or four month payment plans, whatever you need to do to step into your high priestess. You have unlimited access to, access to this, lifetime access to this. It will teach you how to become your high priestess energy, how to change the world, how to heal the world, how to be the calm center of light for other people. Yeah, <laughs> Kim was like, oh, I like the sound of that. So there's goddess studies in there. I'm going to add probably a couple of dark goddesses, probably the Morgan Hecate. And I don't know, I can't, um, maybe Kelly. Um, so I'm going to be working on that. You get elemental magic. You get how to set up an altar, how to work with your ancestors, how to do divination, candle wax, um, spell crafting, moon magic. You get everything you need to do to learn for your first degree to start doing your spell work to start changing some shit, seriously, and changing your circumstances. That's for sure. All right, any questions, my sisters? That link is in the description. If we start on Monday, you have access to the first module now as soon as you sign up. Every Monday, you get new content because I want to give you a week to do the homework. If you have to gather supplies, I want you to give you a week to gather supplies. But in the meantime, in the middle of each week, you do get the support of me and the support of the Facebook group. And then we have monthly live group coaching. Um, so I'm not just going to leave you out there. You're going to have answers. You're going to have transformation. You're going to have shedding of old ideas, of old skin. And I am here to support you through that. Okay. So send me a message. Let's talk about it. I want to see you in here. There's about five people in here that I know are waiting to say okay to this, to just throw out the old way of thinking and come into their high priestess. I've been talking to you. I've been chatting with you. You know who you are. You know that you've been called to do this, but I know that you've been putting it off because of fear and uncertainty and the, um, the time that we're in, it's scary. But me being the high priestess, hi Mariah, me being the high priestess and doing this for 25, 30 years, I knew this was coming. I have not been afraid. Um, I've like, I've been concerned, but not just downright scared. I knew this was coming because because I'm so in tune with Mother Nature. I heard her pleading with us. I heard the guides telling me. I did divination on it. I'm like, you guys are going to be in for a big surprise. You're going to we're having a huge shift. And they're like, I don't wish to all my muggle friends are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, you better start preparing. Oh, you're crazy. Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm sitting here over drinking my tea, pulling my card, being like, you think that, you think that. And then when the shit hit the fan, they're all crazy. And I'm sitting here just pulling cards, doing meditation, reaching out to people, being that support system for those people who didn't listen to me. Because as the high priestess energy, I've been in the high priestess energy for a long time. And I know that I have to be the calmness in the center of chaos. Um, morning, Mariah, thanks for um, being here. So... Um, they look for us. They look for guidance from us. And when you have family and friends around you and they need healing, they need a kind word. And if you hear that, that's my dog digging. Luna Bell. <laughs> She's like, dig it out, dig it out. There's something in there. I got to dig it out. Dig harder, she says. Um, it, yeah, Gemma says it wasn't a surprise to me either. Yeah. Because we work in the magic. 
every day. We know the signs. We know when things are right. And we know when things are wonky and when things need to be more balanced. And we just came out of the, um, the Libra moon, which is about bringing balance into your life. So um, step into your high priestess energy. The world needs you now. You need to shed those old ideas. You need to move into this high priestess energy. You need to stop the internet scrolling because you're not going to find this. I am not just a little bit about me. I've been doing this for a long time, 25, 30 years. I teach covens. I lead feminine circles. I, have you know, studied under, under masters of magic. I didn't just pick shit out of internet and just scroll and say, oh, this sounds good. This is good. I studied for years and years and years under masters of magic and um, crones and high priestesses when before we even had internet. So we didn't have the, the, the what it is now where you can just scroll and pick something. And, oh, that sounds good. No, you had to prove that you understand the fundamentals of magic. You know how to do magic. You know where it came from, comes from. You know how to work your magic. You just don't say, oh, this is what uh, the new moon is. This is the energy you use for it. And they're like, okay, we'll do a new moon ritual. Why do you do a new moon ritual? What does that mean? that I have studied for years and years and years. Learn from me. Stop scrolling in, uh, off the internet and going with what the Instagram witches say you should do. They don't know shit. I'm telling you right now, they don't know shit. Learn from the person who has learned from the OGs, right? Before pre-internet, the stuff that's gonna get you really moving and motivated and cut that crap down. We don't have time for you to scroll anymore. This program is it. This is it for you. 13 weeks, you're going to be out there. Hell, you can start work um, which in week two, right? We don't have time for you to all light and love and fluffy bunny. I'm calling in the warrior high priestess for you. We need time of action. We need time of forward movement. We need calm, consistent moving and you scrolling through the internet is not going to do it you're not you're going to you're going to get confused you're going to get the wrong information you're going to get frustrated and you're just going to shut down completely and you have no support system i give you that support the people in the group give you that support the people that i'm coming and bringing in is going to give you that support so please step into this high priestess energy that you've been called to do. We start on Monday. Monday we start. So let me know if you have any questions. Drop them in the group. Instant message me. Send me a DM. Send me an email. However you want to call me. What is that song? Oh my God, she's in like the desert. She was like, however you want to get to me, get to me or something like that. I forget her name. Now I'm going to have to go play that song. But I am here. We start on Monday. I'm probably going to be working over the weekend too. So, because I'm going to open up some space for you guys to answer your questions. I usually don't work on the weekends, but I need to open that space for you guys. So you guys can step into this high priestess energy and change some shit in the world and change yourself. You're holding on to old patterns that don't serve you anymore. And you're gonna kick yourself in the ass when we move into this new energy and we leave your ass behind. Because I am bringing forward and calling in the people to start this whole witch revolution. We've got the portal that is open for huge amounts of change. And if you're not ready, you're going to kick yourself in the ass because we've got a group of women who are ready to change who they are, what they are, shed some of that old shit and move forward into the high priestess energy and change the world. That portal is closing soon. We don't have a lot of time. And that's why I created this Accelerate Your High Priestess program in just 13 weeks because we got to get you out there witching in the world, changing some shit. 
So, all right, my witchy sisters, I will see you in the Accelerated High Priestess program. If you have any questions about payment plans or, you know, what all is in there, the link is there. Um, send me a message and we will see you. Hey, Katie, I'm just wrapping it up. Catch the replay. Catch me Monday. I will see you on Monday. I'm telling you, I'm giving you permission. I will see you on Monday in my Accelerated High Priestess program, which are my sisters. Bye.